In 2020, Nintendo released Animal Crossing New Horizons, the latest game in the Animal Crossing franchise. The different Animal Crossing installments are social simulation video games, where you play the role of a human who moves to a rural location with anthropomorphic animals who are your neighbours. The game is also tied to your system's clock and calendar. The time and date in-game mirror that of the real world. In the game, you pass time by fishing, planting plants, interacting with your neighbours, catching insects, hitting Sebastian with a net because you hate Sebastian and he won't leave, and decorating your island in an open-ended way without any real hard objectives, which many people find incredibly cathartic and relaxing. A world where you get to go outside and interact with your neighbours in a stress-free way with the regular daily rhythms of life it sounds nice, especially when it released in March of 2020 when certain world events meant that doing those things in real life were difficult. As a result, the popularity of the game skyrocketed. I jumped on the Animal Crossing New Horizons wave in 2020 and stopped playing after a few months. It wasn't until more recently when my friend Ali from Ali's Plants got into the game. Hey! I decided to pick it up again and I found I really enjoyed it. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, you purchase an island getaway from Tom Nook, a raccoon, that you will pay for in bells, the in-game currency. As you progress through the game, you can pay Tom Nook more bells to upgrade your home. You earn bells by selling various things you find, catch or farm. You can also buy different objects to decorate your island and really make it your own. But that got me thinking, what if your island in Animal Crossing was a real country and bells were a real currency? How would it translate to real life money? And would the prices you pay for things in Animal Crossing be comparable to the things you would buy in real life? And finally, is Tom Nook an evil, greedy, uber capitalist villain or just a kindly small business owner who likes to help his community? Today, we're going to find out thanks to maths or math for those of the North American persuasion. Regular viewers of this channel might be thinking, this is a different kind of video than you usually make. And yes, you'd be right. But as usual, I am getting to a point, trust me. <laughs> On my island of Avocadia, named because through some unknown series of events, some people, including myself at times, associate me with avocados and avocado trees. I love collecting fruit, selling it and then buying clothes and furniture to decorate myself and my island. But it got me thinking, if my island were real and this money were real, uh, would I be getting a good deal or not? Well, today we're going to find out. How will we find out? Well, by doing some maths. First, we need to find out how much a bell is worth. Bells are the in-game currency. Well, there are actually two in-game currencies. There are Nook Miles, which are earned through completing various tasks as you just live your day-to-day -day island life and are used to purchase tickets to visit other uninhabited islands to mine resources, to get recipes for different feature customizations, and to buy special items. But the currency you use primarily are bells. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. You use bells for any kind of transaction. In regards to buying and paying for all sorts of things, such as developing the island's infrastructure, by building bridges or inclines, by buying things, or by upgrading your home. One of the best ways of earning bells is by selling fruit or other produce that you grow to Tommy and Timmy Nook, who are Tom Nook's raccoon nephews, who are the shopkeepers at Nook's Cranny, who will buy whatever you bring into them. You can also sell the fish and the bugs you catch, as well as items you make, or other items and clothing that you come across. You can even find glowing spots on the ground, plant some bells, then several days later come and harvest the bells from the money tree that has grown there. Which does pose the question of what exactly are bells that you can plant them in special spots in the ground and they will grow into trees. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about how much bells are worth. So let's find out. 
We need to find an equivalency or something that we buy both in game and in real life, then compare how much each costs. That will allow us to find the value of a bell in terms of dollars. And I'll be using Australian dollars for this because if you hadn't already guessed by my accent and by the fact that I call it maths, I'm from Australia. I'm not going to include conversions into other currencies because well, there are too many of them and the values change over time. So if you need a reference point, simply type in the number of dollars I say throughout this video into Google, followed by AUD for Australian dollars, then to whatever currency you desire. So. In order to find the value of a bell in Australian dollars, I need to find something that has a clear real world counterpart. How on earth was I going to do this? I found myself at The Roost, the coffee shop within the museum that you unlock after donating a certain number of fish, bugs, fossils, and pieces of art. Oh, Brewster, what am I going to do? I don't know, Scott, but would you like a coffee? It's 200 bells. Wait. A coffee at the museum, 200 bells, I can use this information. In the Melbourne Museum, there is the Museum Market Cafe in which they sell coffee. I had to find out how much it was, but I was too lazy to visit. Plus, I had only been there recently when I went to visit the new Triceratops exhibit and then made a video, there's a link in the description. But the Museum Market Cafe have their menu available online. That's when I found out that an eight ounce cup was $4.50. I'm not sure how big the cups are in the roost from Animal Crossing, but I decided that the smaller size would be good enough for today. So I had a Museum Cafe coffee from both Animal Crossing and the real world. And I consider a coffee from the museum in Animal Crossing to be equivalent or the same as a coffee in the museum in Melbourne. So 200 bells in Animal Crossing was the same as $4.50 in the real world. I had numbers to work with. Then I just needed to find out how much one bell was. If 200 bells is equal to $4.50, then if I divide $4.50 by 200, I would get the value of a single bell. So I divided by 200, and if you're following along at home, you could use a calculator, or you could divide by two, then divide by 100, to find that one bell is the same as $0.0225, dollars, or two and a quarter cents. In Australia, we don't have anything less than a cent, so in transactions, we round to the nearest cent, but because we would be multiplying this figure by much larger numbers of bells, I decided that we won't round down and say that one bell is the same as two and a quarter cents, which isn't very much. In Australia, we don't have a coin of that small value. Our smallest is the five cent piece, which has an echidna on it. And it's very sweet. But now we can find out how much different items in Animal Crossing would be in real life, and if the prices are similar or wildly different. One of the main ways I earn bells is by selling produce. I figured that that was a good place to start. When it comes to fruit grown on trees, there are a couple of different prices. You can sell one piece of native fruit for 100 bells. The fruit that grows natively on my island of Avocadia are oranges. So I just had to multiply the value of one bell by 100 to find the price of a single orange on my island, which was $2.25. I thought that might be somewhat close to what it was in real life. I don't buy oranges very often, so I had to go and check. I went down to my supermarket and checked the prices of oranges. One orange came to a grand total of 40 cents. <laughs> That's about 18% the price of an orange that you can sell to Tommy and Timmy. Okay, so uh, close to the price in real life, though oranges aren't native to Australia. Uh, but that brings us to the non-native fruits. On my island, I'm growing pears, peaches, apples, and cherries. Each of these individual fruits can be sold to the Nook Boys for 500 bells each. Yes, five times the amount of a native fruit. Even though it's extremely easy to grow them, you just have to acquire and plant a piece of fruit in the ground, and in a matter of days, you'll have your own fruit tree growing fruit. 
<laughs> that is, as well as we can see, true to seed. Anyway, to find the price of a non-native fruit in Australian dollars, I had to multiply the value of one bell by 500 to end up with the product of $11.25 per piece of fruit. Again, I wanted to reason whether this was anything like real life. So at my local supermarket, I got one apple and paid 88 cents, which is about 8% of the price that Tommy and Timmy are willing to pay me for an apple on my island. So after finding out that I could buy an orange at my local supermarket for just 18% that, I could sell it for in Animal Crossing and that I could buy an apple for just 8% of the price I could sell it for on Animal Crossing, I wanted to know about houses. Were they similar or very different? But first, or what about some of the other items in Animal Crossing New Horizons? Well, if you don't want to make a shovel or any of the other tools that you use in your day-to-day -day life, you can buy them from Nook's Cranny for 600 bells each. That's equivalent to just $15. You can buy a bulldozer for 39,000 bells, which is $877.50, a cello for 130,000 bells, which is the same as $2,925, a garbage can for 960 bells or $21.60, or Mario's hat for 1,200 bells or $27. Some of these seem a little cheap, and buying a bulldozer for less than $900 does feel a bit like theft, but some of the others sound fairly reasonable, even if they do lean towards being on the cheaper side of things. Okay, let's talk about housing and Tom Nook. When you get to your island, Tom Nook will charge you 5,000 bells for a tent to live in. When this happens, you have no bells yet, so Tom gives you a loan you need to pay off that loan before you can upgrade from a tent to buy a house. But how much is that really? Well, we take our value of a single bell and multiply it by 5,000 to find $112.50, which for, let's be honest, a fairly spacious tent is pretty reasonable. I estimate that this tent might be an eight person tent. So I went to check out Anaconda's website to see what they charge for a bog standard eight person tent. And the price was at the cheapest $224, which is almost double the price that Tom Nook charges. And Tom Nook has also essentially sold you the island. Huh. But what about when the house first starts being built? Well, that's gotta get more expensive, right? Well, the first upgrade to a small one room house cost 98,000 bells, which is way more than the tent. But how much in real life? Well, take the value of a single bell and multiply it by 98,000 to get $2,205. That's like, the price of a nice awning to attach to your expensive four-wheel drive. And Tom's charging you that to go from a tent to a house with like a roof and a door and stuff. Once you've paid off that loan, the process repeats. Tom will ask you if you want a, a bigger house. Once you've paid for it, he'll ask if you want to upgrade to get an additional room, then another room and another room and an upstairs space and eventually a basement until you have spent a grand total of 5,696,000 bells on your home. And that's a lot of bells, but is it a lot of dollars? I multiplied the value of a single bell by 5,696,000 to get the grand total of your freestanding two-storied house with a basement of $128,160. That is admittedly a lot of money, except when you consider the actual price of a house. Using data that is correct at the time of writing and recording this, after the second quarter of 2022, the Metropolitan Melbourne median house price, which if you line up all of the prices from least to most expensive is the one right in the middle, that median house price was $1,080,000. And that's not even considering that you could probably consider your completed house in Animal Crossing to have maybe three or four bedrooms and a bathroom. And the price goes up if you look at bigger houses in real life. For comparison, if the median house price in metropolitan Melbourne were in Bells, it would be 
48 million bells. That means that your fully upgraded home in Animal Crossing is just under 12% of the price of the average home in metropolitan Melbourne. I was then wondering if I could even buy a home in Melbourne for the equivalent of the fully upgraded home in Animal Crossing. And it turns out that if you wanted to move to regional Victoria and you wanted a one bedroom, one bathroom unit or just some land upon which to build, then you could, which I suppose my island in Animal Crossing is in a rural setting, but also I own the entire island and my house is not a one bedroom, one bathroom unit. So as Tom Nook a greedy capitalist crook, well, if you compare him to like actual real estate sales in Melbourne at least, the answer would be no. What's more is that the Bank of Nook, the conspicuously named bank that Tom Nook uses to manage your home loans, it doesn't charge any interest. Whereas a real bank charges much more interest, which could have you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars more than the sale price over the life of your loan. Plus the Nook boys at Nook's Cranny are always offering extremely generous prices when buying your fruit. That just means that this is an extremely good deal for whoever lives on this island, which I suppose, as it aims to be a relaxing video game, makes sense that you aren't fretting about finances and that you can make progress without too much strain. So that's my workings and conclusion. Is it a perfect analysis of the economy of Animal Crossing New Horizons? Uh, no. And in fact, as there are many items that have real world counterparts, it's possible to redo all the maths with a different conversion multiplier. But I had to choose a line of inquiry and Museum Coffee was the one that I chose. But feel free to test out what would happen if you used other objects to base your investigation off. But what was the point of this video? Well, in this video, I demonstrated a uniquely human skill, the ability to do maths. Uh, hear me out. There are animals out there who have been shown to be able to recognize numerical stimuli and perform extremely basic reasoning. As in, <laughs> some animals can identify which is bigger because it has more food and that's better for them to choose. Chimpanzees have even been shown to be able to recognize numbers by their labels and in numerical form. But where humans are different is when it comes to actually working with numbers. Humans are extremely good at maths. And I don't mean that all humans find maths easy. I know that maths anxiety is something that many, many people experience thanks to a, a plethora of reasons. But humans can do mathematics. We can take one number and add to it. We can recognize patterns and create generalizations. We can create rules. Even if we aren't doing the computation ourselves, we use tools to help us like calculators. We can still show the understanding to input the numbers and we can reason to see if the result makes sense. We can problem solve and pull out important information from complex problems and reason with it, work through multiple steps and make comparisons with what we have found and draw conclusions. As far as we know, this is something very human. Exclusively so, in fact. And even being able to do the most simple arithmetic is something that only we can do. And I think that's pretty cool. So thank you for joining me on this unusual video for this channel where I had some fun with a video game by pulling apart its economy using maths and comparing it to our real world. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see me do something similar or different in the future with anything in particular, please let me know. Make sure you're subscribed to That's Pretty Cool for more videos where I explore things that capture my curiosity and invoke a sense of wonder. Thanks again, take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.